come on and give him praise. We serve an awesome God, a God that's able to do all things but fail. And what I love about God when he says in his word that if you are faithful, and Philippians 1 and 6, he simply said that he that started a good work in you, he is faithful to complete it within you. So I'm asking you to stand once again. I'm going to pray that God and the blessings of God that it falls upon you today. Not only fall upon you, but you'll be able to move with great power. You'll be able to move with authority. You'll be able to speak those things as though they were. I want you to understand that we serve an awesome God. Do I have a witness in this house? We serve an awesome God. He's a healer. He's a redeemer. We serve an awesome God. And I want you to know how awesome he is. That he's able to do all things but fail. The God that we serve. The God of Isaac Jacob. That you must realize that God is able to do all things but fail. Father, we come to you once again. Knowing that you're able to do all things but fail. We'll give you the praise and all of the glory forever in Jesus' name. And the church says, amen. And as we journey in the word of God today, I'm speaking breakthroughs. I am speaking deliverance. I am speaking that God is going to do some things when you listen to his word and trust his word, it will be done. Amen? 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 The anointing of God is on me so mightily because why? Whenever you decide, desire to do his word and to do his will, you will begin to understand the glory of God. Amen? As we go forth into the word. You have Bibles in front of you, and I encourage you to pick those Bibles up and begin to follow in the scripture because it's important where we're going and what we're doing in Jesus' name. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served as the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power. And that he had come from God and was returning to God. Stop there. Here it is. At the very beginning. Is the hour have come. That Jesus knew. That one had betrayed him. The king. And they knew. What Jesus and they knew that he was the savior of this world. But here's a king operating as a servant. And as they sit in the upper room and they begin to Prepare for the Last Supper. He knew that Judas had betrayed him. He knew this. But they still prepared for service. And the dinner, the hour of come. But it was custom that when you come into the house and they did not have a servant or a maid to clean their feet and Jesus began to operate in the area of the word of God 
a steward of his word and a doer of his word. And I ask you, please, let's move it. There's anointing in here so powerful to I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to walk away from what God is about to do. And I need, there are going to be a total of 12 volunteers. I can do six at one time. This is what communion is all about, folks. The king have not been to the cross, but he has already prepared himself. He know he has been betrayed. The hour has come. Now, my. I want to do what he commanded us to do. Let us read verse 4. So he got up from the meal, Mm -hmm. took off his outer clothing. Stop there. I need six people that want to volunteer. I want to wash your feet. Hi, this is Pastor Victor Hickson, Full Deliverance Baptist Church, Florida City, Florida. Me and my wife, Veronica Hickson, want to just thank you so much for your support, supporting the ministry, taking out the time to write us letters and all, as well as email your prayer requests in. We just want to say thank you for your support. And as your support, just continue to keep us in prayer as we speak to a nation weekly. We are trusting God that this ministry will expand and even go farther. Me and my lovely wife, Veronica, want to thank you once again for the support of Full Deliverance Baptist Church and you all have a blessed and wonderful day. It may seem crazy to you why pastor would do this on this day because the Holy Spirit is leading me to do this. And I want you to understand that you must understand something. Uh, even when the woman came in and cried at Jesus' feet, the disciple simply says, if he only knew who's touching him. But it didn't matter. When I pour the water upon your feet, there'll be blessings that will follow you. I want to do what the word says. Mm -hmm. And I want to trust God. It's time for the church to get in its original position what was already designed from the beginning. But we allow the world to come into church so much till we don't want to trust what he said in his word. We allow the behavior, we allow our actions to come in. I won't touch this, but the word commands us to do it. He tells us in verse 17, in the book of uh, in King James Version, he simply says, you do these things that I ask of you, I'm paraphrasing, happy will you be. And I trust God. What he's doing. My sherobo. My shitarobo shataha. And it said he got up from the table. Go ahead. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, uh-huh. and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin. And begin to wash his disciples' feet. Mm-hmm. 
drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. There's a contact from the towel that was wrapped around his anointed body. And as I wipe your feet and wash your feet, where God is going to do what he said he's going to do, blessings shall follow. And trusting what God is doing. And as the king, he's a servant. And as he began to serve, he did not look at his statue. He did not look at that he was above. And God is calling for people that are truly called by his name. Servantship. He did not come to be served. He came to be a servant. He came to Simon Peter who said to him Lord are you going to wash my feet take your socks off my son Peter refused because Peter was looking at his statue Peter knew who he was but he tell Peter and this is where the body of people are believers, what is taking place. Peter began to refuse and began to get outranked with it. But he said, Peter, you refuse this. You've never been a part of me. When God called you to do some things, folks in the world, he said, the world will know him not and they'll know you not. You trying to please this world and your action and your worship and how you serve God. He said you cannot serve two masters at the same time. You're going to either serve one. You're going to either walk truth. You're going to either walk with love and power. Or you're going to walk with it. Good God, there's a healing happening in this place. There's a deliverance happening in this place. He said I'm calling for a church that is called by my name. Not by no gallant pole. I'm calling that want to walk by truth, want to live in truth. And he went to the next disciple. Even though he was betrayed, he didn't allow the betrayal to stop him from doing what God called him to do. Even though he know that one sit at the table had betrayed him, but he's still doing what his father called him to do. Continue to read, my brother. Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. What you may do sometime, folks don't understand why you're walking around, why you believe the way you believe. Because why? He simply says, I'm doing it because God told me to do it. It don't make sense right now why I walk around this house that I don't have a key to. It don't make sense why I walk around this parking lot and I don't have a key to it yet. But I was told by him. And as he, oh God. Woo. My God, my God, my God. 
There's a healing. And he does it over again. In the name of Jesus, your blessings. In the name of Jesus. Obedient is better than sacrifice. In Jesus' name. The blessings. There's a healing going on in this building. There's a deliverance going on in here. I want to let you know, when you trust God and believe God and know that he's able to do all things, I wash your feet today that you begin to move in mighty things of God. And it was customary because after they come off a long journey, their feet will have dust. And then they, they clean the feet when they come into the house. But I want to let you know, I clean your feet out of humility today for the glory of God to move in your life. Remember, don't let nobody tell you that God is not able to do. He can do all things. And as you go back to your seat, the anointing of God is already here. But I'm telling you, you're going to experience something to, throughout the day that you have never experienced before. In Jesus' name. Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Victor Hickson. I just want to encourage you in your walk in the Lord throughout this 2013, that you trust God and believe God that he's able to do all things but fail. I would love to rush to you this beautiful bottle of anointing oil. So therefore, you could be able to anoint your home, anoint your children, and trust God that he's able to do all things but fail. This oil is a point of contact where that when you anoint and you believe what the word of God says, that you are able to do all things, all things are possible to them that believe. This is Pastor Victor Hickson just encouraging you for any love offering. This oil is available to you that it will bless you, your family, your neighbors, and your friend. This is Pastor Victor Hickson, Full Deliverance Baptist Church, Gateways to the Florida Keys. And we'd love for you to have this bottle of oil. God bless you. No, said Peter. You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not everyone is clean. Continue. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. 
I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who, was, who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. The blessings of God be with you all. Amen. Hi, this is Pastor Victor Hickson. want to encourage you today, a very powerful service, a very powerful move of a God. I want to encourage you and your family, take the time out. Allow this to become a part of your library. Start a library with Full Deliverance Baptist Church, Gateway to the Florida Keys. You're going to experience that same powerful anointing that we receive in the service today. The foot washing service is Jesus simply reminded us as he became the king, became a servant. And then the last feet that I was washing, the power of God came in so strong in this service till all I could do is well out. Because the anointing of God. He said, now that you know these things, if we do them, we, you and I will be blessed. This is Pastor Victor Hickson once again, Florida City, Florida. And we want to thank you for your support. After the storm and after the rain. I want you to understand something. And what the word of God says. In verse 17, he simply began to tell us. And I, and I love it. He said, if you know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. It's time for you to come out of tradition. It's time for you to come out of that tradition. Tradition have kept people so far in the back out of the presence of God. I come to church because I come because mom and daddy did it. I come because that. No, you come to church because Jesus has birthed himself in your life. You come and realize that I'm not going to be hung up on tradition. I'm trusting God that he's able to do all things but fail. And in the upper room, when Jesus began to do what he needed to do in that upper room, they was amazed because why? The king become the king is operating as a servant. And when it, as he operating as a servant, he did not come here to be served. He came here to be a servant. He gave, his, he gave himself a ransom for many. He died so you and I could have the right of eternal life. He died so you and I could see the anointing and the glory of him. He died so you and I could be able to be free to worship and to magnify. He died so you could be able to explore the wonders of his mysteries and his glory. He said, "Mine." he said, ears have not heard nor eyes have not seen. For the one that who have what loved me, what I have in store for them. Some people may think, well, washing feet is beneath them. Let me tell you, when you do them for the glory of God, it's not what beneath me, it's where I'm going, my destiny. I am a servant. I will not be greater than my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I could do great. I, the Bible said you'll do a greater work, but there's no way you're going to exceed the master. Because why? He said, I must go back to the Father. And when I go back to the Father, I send a comforter. That comforter in, in the Greek called Paraclete, he said that he will lead you and he will guide you to all understanding. And I want you to understand something. If you're looking for a healing and a breakthrough, you got to trust God that he's able to do all things but fail. He's able to bring you out of something. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what it looked like. Now is the time for your blessing. Now is the time for your body to be healed. I was speaking to the doctor on Tuesday, and I've been fighting diabetes since 06. I've been fighting since 06. But when I called, when he called me on Tuesday, he said, Pastor, I'm sorry I couldn't get in contact with you earlier. But whatever you're doing, 240 is your number. 
Your blood sugar is in the six, huh? It's in the six. It's no longer in the sevens. You are, I'm telling you, my God is still healing. My God is still delivering. My God is still making provision. My God is still opening doors. I don't know about you, but I'm trusting God every day for cancer to disappear. I'm trusting God for lupus to be removed. I'm trusting God for every, every disease and infirmity. There's nothing heaven cannot heal. There's nothing that heaven cannot heal. You know what? I'm stepping out of the realm into his glory. There's a powerful anointing in this building right now. It's so powerful. He said, if my people that are called by my name humble themselves, bow down. I have to do what he called me to do. Bow down. There's a healing need to be done in your body. I want you to move. Mother, as I touch your feet, God is saying, I'm going to do something miraculously in your body. I'm going to move some things that you've been wrestling with for 20 years. You've been wrestling with it for 20 years. Spirit of depression does not belong to you. You've been just, it just, it come over you when it want to, but no longer it have control over you. It no longer have no authority over you. For years you've been fighting that spirit of depression, and that spirit of depression have caused you to be in corners, have caused you to back up from man's glory. God told me to tell you, you are free now. You are free in the name of Jesus. You are free. You've been dealing with it since, you've been dealing with depression since you were a teenager. A teenager. Am I right or wrong, mother? You, my God, my God, he knows it. He said, I call you to great wonders. Receive. Receive. 